Let's start the topic on systems thinking, inspired by the book of Jackson. Here we will address different concepts, mostly on hard system thinking and soft system thinking, and how a potential case you should handle can be categorized depending on the participants and depending on the complexity of the project. Let's try to think in systems. That's the idea of this topic. There are four reasons by which we should be thinking in systems. Reasons that foster the systems language. First, it's a correction to the reductionism. Meaning, of course, that most of our models, if not all of them, are always far from reality. And complexity of different actors when addressing a different model is not always addressed. Then we should take a look of the problem with a more holistic approach. And it is not thinking only about the process, but also the structure. Meaning that we don't follow just blueprints, that there is openness for a different approach on addressing particularly difficult problems, complex problems. And also why systems language? It's not only about the fact that we will use transdisciplinary approaches for one particular problem, multidisciplinary fields, electronics, mechanics, process, industrial design, all summed together just to have an insightful design that will solve our problem in a more holistic way. But also we grasp and we have a better approach to real problems, because then our models are closer to reality. When our context is highly pluralist, meaning that the stakeholders have no common goal, or the common elements of the goal are very few. That brings a system that can be analyzed with, with the soft perspective, the meaning soft systems thinking. Now, there are three keywords that define a hard systems thinking approach or a soft systems thinking approach. And those keywords are values, beliefs, and interests connected to the participants in the project and connected also to the context. Now, when there is a lot of similarity among the participants in those three different fields, values, beliefs, and interests, and when the problem context is not so extremely complex, then we talked about hard systems thinking. Otherwise, the project can be categorized. The problem to be solved can be categorized in soft systems thinking. This graph proposed by Jackson is particularly interesting in terms of systems thinking and how to allocate our project, how to allocate the problem to be solved and the context of the problem within a system. So we have systems versus participants. So if the points of view of the participants, meaning not only the researcher, but also stakeholders, people that have high interests and people that define specific requirements, technical requirements, if those points of view are common, if there is no pluralism, then we talk about a unitary set of participants and also if the project is highly simple, meaning that there is no complexity or multidisciplinary fields, then we talked about hard systems thing. For instance, the project that we solved during the TVL1, the thalamus as a controller for different regions of the brain. Here we have one particular point of view, control theory, mathematical modeling, and numerical analysis are tools and methods that can be used to solve the problem, or at least to answer the questions and then to reach the goal. Those are common views from all the participants, mostly the academic world. And also we aim for a, one particular system, even one particular non-linear 
mathematical model from this system, which means that there are no other different fields, there are, there, there are all, no other engineering fields. So it tends to be a system that can be analyzed or can be connected to hard systems thinking. But when we have systems dynamics connected to the course unit that you did during the first year, for instance, organizational systems, cybernetics, complexity theory, or any field that really requires different types of fields, multidisciplinary fields, and when you have different points of view about the problem and about the context of the problem, then we tend to think that that's a project that should be analyzed from the soft systems thinking approach. Jackson also proposes a so-called systems analysis methodology with three main steps. The formulation of the problem and the context, the operationalization research, and later on, the evaluation. If you look closely, this three-step analysis methodology proposed by Jackson, it's quite similar to the cycles that we proposed at the beginning of the course unit. Formulation of the problem, understanding the context, checking the values and the criteria of the participants, defining objectives. Everything goes from formulation to research. Later on, we have the operationalization, the research itself, identifying, designing and screening the alternatives, and even building the models in terms of system thinking and checking if those models are closer to reality. One way is, of course, to generate our data or to gather our data, to create a numerical model or a more deterministic model, not, not so stochastic, and then comparing the results with reality and see if our models have some sense of val validity or not. And that validation, that evaluation comes into the third step of this analysis methodology proposed by Jackson. We compare our results and we communicate our results such that the outcome is being carefully evaluated. And this closes, of course, the methods in terms of formulation, research and evaluation. But again, thinking in systems and creating models, models that replicate the complex problem that we are addressing with stakeholders that are highly pluralist or they have just common point of, points of view or systems that are highly complex or systems that really respond to a very specific niche where there is no multidisciplinarity. When you are facing a system that has highly deterministic variables, variables that can be predictable based on the laws of nature, but also you may have variables that are highly stochastic or non-deterministic. And if you add, besides those two elements, you add the fact that the system depends on time or not, then you, at the end, you have these types of analytical modeling. Now we go from the simple analytical modeling for algebraic equations. We gain complexity by adding time. And here we have ordinary differential equations or nonlinear differential equations. But also, once the stochastic type of variables are there, and we even add the time, not the continuous time, by discrete time, we aim to model the problem with a discrete event simulation. And we have, of course, uh, toolboxes for this and, and different mathematical theories for that. We can always talk about the statistics and probability those types of relationships also to describe a very particular model. Now, this matrix represents thinking in systems, and it's one way to address your system. 
So you should always ask yourself, are you going to deal with deterministic or non-deterministic variables? And are those variables depending on time? And is, you can even go to one extra question. Is that time continuous or discrete? And that's precisely the example or a key example that we can use when addressing the cases for the course unit or when addressing a mathematical modeling approach for a particular problem in a very particular context. The holistic approach of Jackson when formulating your problem statement and before that analyzing the problem context in terms of a system defining inputs, outputs, subsystems, interrelations, defining whether it's connected to a hard systems thinking approach or a soft systems thinking approach, or even defining variables that are highly deterministic or stochastic, or whether the system is time invariant or not, or whether you should consider system with a discrete event approach or a continuous approach. Those are common questions that will help you out to formulate a better goal, sub-questions, and mostly define methods and tools to answer those sub-questions.